Okay, so as we move forward, I would love to call on a very beautiful, talented, amazing woman. I would love to call on Busayo Ojo to give us open source for everyone, supercharge your tech career. She's a programs manager and, an, and also a technical writer. Let me a round of applause for her, please. A round of applause. Good luck. Everyone, good, what time is it? Good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here today. And I've seen so many beautiful faces. I mean, we're just girls. We look so amazing. So, as they mentioned, my, this is my slides. Yes, so as they mentioned, my name is Busayo. I'm a technical, I mean, anytime someone asks me to introduce myself, I, I get flustered because <laughs> it's a lot. So I'm a technical writer. I'm a program manager at Opia, where I also interned uh, with Outreachy. And I'm also a co-chair on the Chaos Project Management Board. And today we'll be talking about how you can utilize open source in supercharging your career. So I don't know if all of us know this opera meme. So open source for you, open source for me, and open source for everyone. So let's get started. Um, the main takeaways from this session, we're going to understand the basics of open source. Um, unfortunately, due to some technical issues, we would not be able to have this hands-on on how you can make your first contribution to open source. But we'll talk about how you can utilize open source in your career to kickstart your career. And we'll also see how we can find open source projects. So before we start, I want us to play a quick game. And there's a prize for whoever gets my answers right. So this is two truths and a lie. I don't know if many of us are familiar with open source. But let's see how it goes. So I'll be taking three responses. So if you think you can answer, please feel free to raise your hand. So the first question is, it is necessary to request permission from the project owner before contributing to an open source project. No, I don't want chorus answer. I want, just, I want people to raise up their hands and I get to call someone. Um, and you know, if I call you, you have to answer the other questions. Okay. Um, the lady with the red handband, please. Let's start with her. For, okay. Okay. Um, just hold on. I want to see if somebody else has like another, yes, another opinion. So anybody else wants to answer that? Okay, give it glasses. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. So let's go to the second question now. You can contribute to open source without writing code. Yes, you. Okay. Thank you for your answer, Hugh. Um, the second question is true. Okay. Because there are um, various aspects of um, open source projects and not everything is based on writing codes. Okay. So like there are the documentation parts, you don't have to know how to code. Okay, to thank you very much. Yeah. Now the third question, open source licenses are legally binding. We'll start from her, please. No. Okay. No, 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 Thank you for your a, answer. Yeah. Do you want to tell us why you said no? Okay, 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 okay. It's a... You don't have to guess. You've already said your answer. Yeah, that one is registered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's give the next <laughs> person.
um, code or whatever, you can't, it, he kind of has like, will I say like a trademark on it or something, so true. Okay, thank you so much to both of you. Please, can we give them a round of applause? I mean, in a huge crowd like this, they courageously stood up and answered the question. So now let's see our answers and see who got it right and who would get my prize. So the answer is, the first one is a lie. You do not need to request permission to contribute on GitHub. Um, to open source projects, most of them are hosted on GitHub, and anybody can go there, make whatever changes you want to make, and that's the end. The second one is also true. You can contribute to open source without writing code. I haven't written open source code in a very long time, and I still am contributing to open source. The third one is actually true. So unfortunately, sorry, what's your name? Taufika, unfortunately, you missed it. But um, what's your name, please? Chisom got it right. So Chisom, please, after this session, um, after the event, please, you can reach out to me. Thank you. Please give Chisom a round of applause. And Taufika, too. She did amazing. So let's talk about what open source is. So to simply put, open source is a project. Open source could be a lot of things, actually. Uh, I think calling it a software is very, very limiting because open source is a lot of things. It could be a project, it could be software, it could be community with publicly available codes, projects, programs. And these projects, these communities, they allow people to make changes, give suggestions, make edits, make enhancements, make alterations into their project. So I have another question. This time I have no prize. If you want to answer, you can feel free to tell us. Do you know any open source projects? Who among us here knows any open source projects? Okay. React. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think, mm, well, uh, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Anybody else wants to try? Uh, okay. The person with the pink hijab. Yes, please. Yes, you. Behind you. She's behind you. Yes. No, no, no. You raised up your hand now. But there's a pink one underneath. Um, Creative Commons. Okay. We have Wikimedia. Yes. We have Opia. Yes, thank you. You're very correct. Please give her a round of applause. Um, our answers are very correct. So these are some open source projects, but there are some particularly popular ones. And one is Mozilla Firefox. I know a lot of us make use of this browser, or I've heard about this browser, and you'd be surprised to know that it is actually open source. Another one is VLC. How many of us have VLC on our phones? I think everybody has it. I mean, um, before streaming sites emerged, when we used to download pirated movies, most of those players could not play those movies. It was only VLC. So thank you to open source, isn't it? Right, so VLC is another very popular open source project. Then we also have, I think I've forgotten what this is called. Anyway, we'll now go to the next slide that says community collaboration key to driving innovation. And as I said, community collaboration and driving innovation, na collabo. Mm -hmm. So why do I, why do we say this? You know, when a different people from different walks of life come together, they are bringing different perspectives, they are bringing different ideas. Let's say there's a project, somebody from China, is bringing their input. Somebody from Nigeria is making their input. Somebody from a different country entirely is also making their input. How do you think that kind of project would be? I think it would be very, very superb. And that is one of the power of open source because it's not limited to certain people in certain demographics. Different people have access to make changes, to contribute to it. And this is one key way that um, open source has been able to drive innovation. And another thing is faster progress. 
So with open source collaboration, there are a lot of people working on it. I mean, there are projects, for example, in the chaos community that I currently contribute to. I know we have over 1,000 contributors. Now imagine 1,000 people, 500 of us, working on a particular project. That project is definitely going to be amazing, and the work rate is going to be very fast. And another reason why um, open source is very effective is that people learn from each other. I've had the opportunity to work with really amazing people, and I've been able to improve my skills, both communication skills, technical skills, and all these have been possible through this open source collaboration. A picture that comes to mind is this. I know we all know Vicky James, isn't it? I mean, she's this global fashion designer that is so amazing with everything she does. But if you look at that picture on the slide, we see that a lot of people work behind the scenes to make that magic happen. So it is the same way we open source. Thousands of people, sometimes hundreds, are contributing to make that project successful. And that is why when you see Vicky James dresses, you are wild. But see the amount of work, see the amount of people that are working on that. Somebody said we can't see. Oh, sorry about that. So sorry. Okay, now let's talk about why open source matters for your career. So now, we've talked a lot about open source. So why do you need to contribute to open source? So with, excuse me, with open source, you develop your skills. So your technical skills, for example, a developer, uh, you, get to, you get to work with other senior developers. They give you suggestions. They give you things you can improve on. With that, you are building your skills. Okay, let's say you even, you're not a developer, you're a technical writer. You work on documentations. Other senior um, technical writers give you advice. Okay, next time, maybe you could do this this way. You are building your skills, and all these skills are very essential and very important in the job market. Another one is real world experience. There's something they call tutorial debt. I mean, when I first started as a front-end developer, I was watching hundreds of tutorials. I learned from Udemy, learned from YouTube, learned from, thank you, learned from Coursera. We have hundreds of these courses. But it's very possible that you're just watching and watching, and in reality, you do not really know what you're doing because you are watching your, the person teaching you and you are replicating exactly what he's doing. But with open source contributions, you get to work on real world projects, real life projects. You get to see impact. You get to see people using what you're making. And I think this is very effective for anyone that is getting started in their career. Another important um, reason why you should contribute to open source is networking opportunities. We all know today that a lot of jobs today is through networking. Gone are the days where you can randomly just submit your CV and somebody, will, they will just pick you. Most times now, you need to know somebody or somebody needs to recommend you, isn't it? Yeah. That's actually very true. So, with open source contributions, you get to meet amazing people that can transform your career, that can recommend you for certain roles, that can say, oh, I think this person has been doing an amazing job in this community. I think they'll be a good fit for this. I think they'll be a good fit for that. That is another benefit of contributing to open source. Another thing is flexible learning. I know there are some very popular internships today. I won't mention names, but a lot of people have always complained about how stressful they are, how strenuous. People went into depression. No, don't mention names, though. Right. Please. Please. We don't want people to mention names. But with open source contributions, you can learn at your own pace. You go at your own pace. You're not under any pressure by anybody. You contribute when... Sorry, one house, please. Thank you, guys. I know it's a very soft spot for a lot of us because we've gone through a lot. <laughs> so with open source contributions, you go at your own pace. That's one good thing. So I'm not saying go to a community and be dormant. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't have to be under unnecessary tension, right? So another benefit is recognition. I mean, we know a lot of 
popular open source um, stars, popular open source contributors. And this might not have been possible. They might not have had the reach they have today if they were not actively contributing to open source. Another one is teamwork. You learn to collaborate with diverse teams, international teams. You improve your speaking skills. I mean, when you're speaking with, um, let's say, a white man, and you have, um, you're speaking in a funny way, even they'll tell you, I can't hear you. And you learn to brush up your skills. That is one thing that I have particularly learned to do from um, working with people in open source. Next, we have career opportunities. So with open source, some people get contracts, some people get gigs, some people are commended for other roles. All these are possible through open source. Then we now have paid opportunities like internships. And the good thing about open source internships, they don't, they don't play with their, their, their workers. They pay you and they pay you really well. If time permits, we might still talk more about that later on. Okay, so roles in open source. So no matter your job description, no matter your interest, there's something for you in open source field. You're in, a, you're in the design world, you're a developer, you work with security. There is something for you in open source. So like I said, currently, my role does not involve any technical aspects of some sort. So there's something for you. Even if you're a total newbie, there is something you can do in these different communities. So where do you now find this open source project? Because now you have some benefits as to what it can do for you. Where do you get them? So one good place is GitHub. So how many of us know GitHub here? Huh. Texas, love it. So GitHub is the most highly recommended place to find open source projects. So if you go to GitHub, I was supposed to show this um, live, but unfortunately we cannot. But if you go to GitHub, you search good first issues or help wanted, you would see this open source projects that you can just easily start contributing to as a beginner. Then another one is Open Source Friday, GitLab, Awesome for non-programmers, non then my community, Chaos Africa. We are very, very welcoming to um, new beginners, new joiners. We have cool triage, we have first timers only, and open source design. So you can take a picture of this in case you need to look for this open source project. Next, we have how do you choose the right project? So how do you know that this is something you want to do. So the first thing you have to do is understand the project alignment. Let's say you are a designer. You will not go to a community where most of the work they do is on writing. You would not have, you might not find a place that you are fit for, right? So you have to understand what does this project do? Who makes use of this project? What are the benefits of this project to society? Then another thing you have to look out for is active community management. You don't want to go to a community where people do not talk to each other. People do not say anything. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's on their own. You'll just be there. You will not make any, you're not of any benefit. You're just there and you're in a community. So another thing you need to do is to start small. I've seen a lot of new joiners make this mistake. They are everywhere. I mean, people want to be recognized, yes, for the work they are doing, but it can also be a trap. Then you're here, you're there, and you're nowhere. You get overwhelmed, you get burnt out because you want to do everything all at once. So it's very essential for you to start small. As I said, quality over quantity. If, okay, you take a documentation, maybe, in two weeks, you're able to fix all the typos on one. It's more than you taking five documentations, and when the senior technical writer is reviewing it, they are seeing tons of errors. They are leaving comments, oh, Busayo, um, you didn't fix this, you didn't fix that. They are seeing those things, and it doesn't really speak well for you. So another thing is to check the project mission and impact. Do you want to help out children in the community? Do you want to see how it works with an NGO. 
So these are things you have to look out for when you're deciding which projects you want to contribute to. And also try to check for communities that provide feedback, right? It's not that you make a pull request now, and the pull request is there for months. Nobody's checking it. Nobody's looking at it. That won't help you grow. So what are secrets to contributing effectively? So now you're in a community. You found a community that you enjoy working with. You like them. So how can you be of benefit to this community? The first thing is to be vocal. If you see that there are things that are not going on right, if you see that they are not very inclusive, you can mention it. Speak up at meetings. A lot of open source communities are very open to suggestions, as their, as it, as their name goes, open source. So be very vocal. If things are unclear to you, ask questions. Oh, sorry, I don't understand this. Can you explain what you guys really do? So. Okay, that brings us to my next point. Ask questions and introduce yourself during meetings. So don't go to meetings and be quiet. You're not talking. You're not saying anything. You're just in the meeting. Mm. I know some of us are shy people. We don't like to talk too much about ourselves. But I mean, this is your reality. This is your career path. You might as well just put your all into it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? As the mother said, you either go hard or you go home. I know none of us wants to go home. Or, hmm. my, my village is very far. I, for one, do not want to go. So another thing you have to do is be patient. I mean, it might take some time for you to understand what is going on in the community. But don't just join and after two months you're out. Take some time, study, listen to people. And another thing is do not take criticism to heart. Some people, maybe they left a the comment that, oh, um, we don't like how you did this. They flare up and they decide that they are no longer contributing. It's honestly not the best. So just take it easy, listen to correction, then create a niche for yourself. As I said earlier, don't just be everywhere. There's no impact from you, you're not doing anything. Might as well just stick to one and let everybody know that you are amazing at this one that you have stuck to. So, as I mentioned, we were supposed to have um, a live demo of how to make your first contribution. But unfortunately, we cannot do that. So open source is your way up as a newbie in tech. It's something that has really helped me in my career. I mean, I started actively, um, I started tech in, let's say, 2021. Right, so it's been about three years now. And I think a lot of things that I've achieved would not have been possible without open source. So I don't have any other um, good luck charm or this is what I did. I only contributed to open source and I have been able to utilize that really well. And fortunately, it has worked out well for me. So thank you very much everyone for listening. Um, now, I'll be taking questions. So if you have any questions, we still have some time. Um, you can ask your question. Yes. Can you share your Okay. Thank you for that question. So um, I interned with Altrichi in 2022, and I contributed to Opia. So what Opia does is we provide... Um, an education app for under-resourced learners. So children that do not have access to good education, we help them out with that. And honestly, it might have seemed like an easy project to contribute to because others were mostly code, code work. It was a lot of work. I had to go to different schools, conduct user research, and it was my first time doing anything UX that was related to that field. So before then, I was just a front-end developer. But I didn't see any project that I actually liked when the list of projects came out, but I saw up here. I was like, okay, might as well give it a try. So I tried initially, I wasn't accepted, but I did try a second time, and I got in. So that was how that went. And I'm still with them. I now lead their uh, partnerships for Sub-Saharan Africa. So do we have any other question? OK, there's someone there. We have some time left. Because okay. we just we treated personal brand in the last um, session. So how this plays into like branding yourself? OK. 
So oh, that's, that's a really good question. Um, actually, it's all about how you market yourself. And I think that's something I'm still trying to work on. I mean, you could be doing a lot behind the scenes. And if you're not really putting in out there, nobody knows what you're doing. So for personal branding, let's say you're in a community that, okay, you do outreach to organizations, you go to schools, you, it's something you can take, share on social media that, okay, I'm in this community, I was assigned this tax, I was assigned to do this project, and this was how it went. This was my role, this was what I did, this is what I helped improve in this community. Then, for like your own personal development, let's say whatever field you're in, when you keep contributing, you keep getting better. I don't know if that captures your question. So it's been a good run. Thank you.